And this God over here, people are going to bring their babies and burn them, set them on fire. How could Saul, he forgot God's attitude towards sin? You know, if you and I, if God's churches, if we forget God's attitude towards sin, guess what? We're going to give our children to the world. And we would never do that. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. How come there's fewer and fewer and fewer churches? Because churches have given their children to the world. They've given their message to the world. They don't want to preach the truth anymore. They want to preach a social gospel. Preaching the truth gets you 22 people in church. A social gospel will get you 500. That's right. Yeah. Well, let's give it to the world. No, you know what? We're going to give it to the world when we forget how God cares about sin. That social gospel does nothing for people's eternity, and it does nothing for people's fellowship in this life. Man. It does absolutely nothing. John 3, 36, he that believeth, by the way, praise God we have 22 people in church. I, I'm not, <laughs> that's not a downer to me. I'm not, I'm not disappointed. I don't want it to come out wrong. I'm just saying that, that that's, that's true. You go, I used to get things in the mail when I first became a pastor here. I don't know how my name got on some list, but I get things in the mail. Pastor Shum, how to build your church in three months. Follow our program. You know what? It didn't say anything about preach the truth. It was about making relationships with people and starting a coffee club and this and... It's not what the Bible says. The Bible says go, preach, teach, baptize. The Lord will do the rest. The Lord will take care of it. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. Well, that is so mean. I just don't believe God would send people to hell. Listen, God doesn't send people to hell. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. That's Bible. That's Bible. God did not prepare hell for mankind. Hell was prepared before man was even here. If you go back and read your Bible, it was already prepared for the devil, Satan, and his angels, mankind, God never intended for man to go there. But when man sinned, look over at Romans. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. That's Adam, by the way. And so death and death by sin. Death is the consequence of sin. Death is not just the air passes out of your body and your heart stops beating. Death in the Bible is a separation. Amen. It starts with physical death, the separation of the man's soul from his body. But death is separation from God. Now, we've heard the saying, you're born once, you die twice, born twice, die once. Listen, if you're born again... If you're born of the water and of the Spirit, as Jesus told John in John chapter 3, you only have to die once. You only have to die, as it appointed unto men, once to die. Your body, you only have to die in your flesh. You don't have to die spiritually. Amen. You never have to be separated from God. You never, ever have to be separated from God, even just for one minute, just for one second. Because if you're born again, the moment that your life ends in the flesh, you go on to heaven to be with the Lord. Amen. Right away. But we don't have that until we're saved. Because all we have to begin with is the penalty of sin. You know, every single lost person is on the road to hell. They are condemned already. They didn't have to do anything to be condemned. They were. They were born sinners. There's nothing we can do to change that on our own except the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12, I'll finish it up. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. You know, we're all dying. Or I shouldn't say we're all. Well, we all physically are dying. We're not moving towards physical eternal life. Spiritually, we all have eternal Not we all, sorry. Those of us that are saved in here, we have eternal life. 
But physically, we're all dying. My body's getting weaker. You know, I might eat right, I might exercise, I might drink a lot of water, whatever it may be. I'm just slowing the process down. But I'm dying. Amen. All right? But Amen. spiritually, every lost person is on the road to hell. The Bible says the wrath of God abides on him. What wrath is that? It's not wrath on the individual. It's not because he doesn't like Paul or Tom or Sam. It's he abhors the sin. Amen. And he cannot dwell with that sinner for all of eternity. The only way they can be allowed in his presence is how? Salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ that would cover their sin. Romans chapter 5 again in verse 8. But God commendeth his love. Again, I've heard, I've heard my mother-in-law say it. I've heard other people say it. I just can't believe God would do that. Why does God let? Why does God allow? I wish this world could see. I wish I, wish I could somehow make her and, and others see. I can't. Only the word of God can. Only the spirit can touch their heart. But listen, God does not send or make or any of it. Listen, God's grace and mercy allows for a way of escape. Amen. Well, I just can't believe God would send people to hell. Listen, we send ourselves to hell. Mankind has separated himself from God for by our sin. God is angry at it. Is he's hot? His temper, his 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 uh, uh, wrath is against sin. But his grace and his mercy, his love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Why can't the world focus on that and not say, well, God sends people to hell? You know what? That's why it's called the good news. That's why it's called the gospel. And we need to share it. We need to tell people about it. Because Satan is going to try to turn people's eyes. He's going to try to turn their minds. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Is God angry at sin? Absolutely. Does he abhor sin? Absolutely. But he also is merciful. Because the Bible says that while he was angry at it, while he abhorred it, while he was meeting out his judgment and waiting for that day of the Lord where he is going to purge this world of sin, he commended his love towards us. He gave his only begotten son. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. I know I've spent the whole message talking about the wrath of God. And if it was just, if it just ended at the wrath of God, we would have no hope. We would, there would be no reason to rejoice. But you know what? You and I can rejoice because of this verse right here. We shall be saved from the wrath of God. That, just taking into consideration all the verses we've read and the many more verses, boy, that's one of the greatest verses in the Bible. We shall be saved from the wrath of God. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Listen, if we're reconciled to God, we don't have to taste the wrath of God. You and I... If you're saved here this morning, I can't see your heart. I can't see my wife's heart. I can't see... All I know is where I stand with God. If I'm a saved child of God, I don't have to fear this wrath of God. Oh, I might have to fear the discipline of God if I stumble or if I sin against Him or whatever. But I don't have to fear those elements being melted with fervent heat. I don't have to fear the, the wrath of God coming out. And the Bible says there's going to be a time when men are going to cry unto the rocks to fall upon them. And they're going to look for places to hide from the wrath of God. And there's not going to be a place to hide. Look over to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. The wrath of God will consume sin forever. You know, there's, there's going to be a time. Well, I shouldn't even say there's going to be a time. Because time's not going to exist. We're going to be in eternity. But there will be, there will be a period <laughs> where you and I are not going to remember this sinful earth anymore. This earth will, well, this earth won't even be here. There will be no hint, no presence of sin any longer. We, won't, we don't know. I, I can't fathom that. <laughs> you and I, we can't make sense of that right now. Because all we know is sin. 
All we know is the effects of sin. All we know is that we look out here at the weeds. We look at the things that are dying. You know, we, we, I'm sweating right now. We look at all that stuff. You know, that's all effects of sin. You know, there's going to be a time where the wrath of God, yes, but the mercy of God is going to wipe away every remembrance and every consequence of sin. Revelation chapter 11, verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 20, verse 11. He says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. This is Jesus Christ sitting on the throne, and the Bible says, The earth and the heavens fled away. You know, for centuries, for thousands of years, mankind has been running away from the presence of God. They've been denying God. They've been pushing Him away. And probably no, at no greater time than right now, the, the time we're living in. But you know what? At this, on this day, there's going to be no place for them to go. They're not going to be able to ignore God. They're not going to be able to say He doesn't exist. They're not going to be able to say, Our way is better than yours, God, because they're going to be standing before His throne. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. That's the Bible, by the way, the books. The 66 books of the Bible. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. What is this book? What do these 66 books talk about? They talk about Jesus Christ. They talk about God. And these individuals are not going to be judged. Well, the Bible says you shouldn't murder. The Bible says no. That's not what they're going to be judged on. They're going to be judged because they did not believe in the name of the Son of God. He's going to open his word. He says in John chapter 5, the scriptures, they testify of me. They're going to be judged by the word of God. And those things which are written in the books, according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and listen to this, death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell... See, death is separation from God for all of eternity. It's not just something that happens to somebody when their heart stops beating and, and, and all that. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is where you get that. Born once, die twice. You know what? I pray to God that nobody in here and none of our children ever have to experience this second death. We don't have to. You don't have to. You know, those 13 people that got saved at church camp last week, they don't have to experience a second death. Praise God. You know, Brother Eddie, I can actually call him Brother Eddie now. I called him Brother Eddie before, but he wasn't a brother. But according to his testimony, he's truly saved now. You know what, Brother Eddie, he's not going to have to experience his second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This lake of fire here is the eternal judgment of God on sin. The devil's not going to get out. Mankind, no man or woman's going to get out. Uh, Mark chapter 9, the Bible says, Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Go read that. Mark chapter 9, verses 43 through 48 sometime. That worm is talking about the soul of man. The worm dieth not. There's no relief. There is no relief for anyone who will ever be in the lake of fire. Why? Because God is angry at sin. And God's anger will never, at sin, God's, He will never not be angry at sin. He is never going to justify it. He is never going to allow it. He is never going to approve of it. And why? Because sin separates. I know I've gone over that many, many times, but sin separates us. From God. The last verse I want to read this morning, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. I know we all know this one, but we probably know a lot of the verses we looked at this morning. That doesn't, doesn't change. Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is death. The consequence, the penalty, you know, the results of sin is death. Who set that? Who set that wage? God did. God made that. We don't get to change. You know, there's never been a man or a woman on this earth that said, oh, I don't like that rule. It is. That, is. that is the consequence of sin. That is the judgment of sin. But the gift of God is eternal life. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Is God angry at sin? Absolutely. Does he love the sinner? Yes, he does. And because of his love, he sent his only begotten son. And because of his love, he sets that gift right before each and every man, woman, and child on this earth. How do I know that? Well, the Bible says that the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. You know, there's a lot of people in this town. We may or may not get a chance to talk to all of them. If we get to talk to them and we get a chance to tell them the gospel, then right there, the grace of God has appeared to them. Not because of you and I, but because of God. If we don't get to talk to them, you know what? We need to try but maybe somebody else will. Before they die, though, they will have an opportunity. Before they die, somebody will talk to them about the Lord. They will read or get a chance. Before they die, they will have a, a knowledge that God sent His Son to die for them, whether they choose to accept it or not. Think about how many times you have. I don't know. I, I, you know, I've heard testimony... Uh, maybe we need to do a testimonial service. I, I don't know the testimony. I, I'll tell you what, I had a lot of chances. I had a lot of chances. And God didn't have to give me all those chances. But He did. And His grace appeared to me many times. And you know, thankfully, thankfully I accepted Him. When I was 11 years old, I was sitting in the back of a, uh, of a church building. And I kept waiting and waiting for the preacher to get done preaching because I knew I was scared to death of riding home from church. I thought maybe my uncle was going to crash the car. We were actually headed back to church camp, and I did not want to get in that car with him. I knew that if, if I crashed, my family would all think I went to heaven, but I knew I was going to go to hell. And I couldn't wait any longer, and I went to kneel down at the pew. You know what? I didn't even get the words out of my mouth. There's no magic words to say. The Bible says you've got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, but you don't have to kneel down and, okay, I need to confess with my mouth. The Bible says believe. I think Brother Ross brought that out a couple weeks. Believe. Believe in your heart. That's by faith, for by grace are we saved through faith. Now, I knelt down, and I'll tell you what, I had a peace in my heart. I finally surrendered. I gave up. I, I'm saying I. It wasn't anything I did. Jesus Christ saved my soul. I can go back to that time. I can go back uh, to, to that moment in my life. And, and, and I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if I were to die right now, I'd go to heaven and be with the Lord. Why is that? It's not because of anything I've done. That's because of the grace of God. The unmerited favor of God. I certainly did not uh, deserve that. As a matter of fact, I deserved hell. Because I had rejected His gift many times. But God... Uh, gave his salvation to me that day and I'm so thankful for that. I am so grateful for that because I look in the scriptures and I see that God is angry at sin. His wrath on sin will never change. But praise God for that gift. Let's stand this morning.